Lab 2, Lines of Charge by Anna Catherine Brewer. Introduction. So the purpose of this lab is to better understand charges and their interactions with everyday objects and to determine the excess charge left on a piece of tape. The main result of this lab will be to determine if the tapes hold a positive or negative charge by having them interact with household objects. In this lab, we will use GlowScript to model the behavior of the tape and we'll, we will also utilize the following main physics ideas. The physics models that we will be using in this lab are Newton's third law, Coulomb's law, which can be seen to the right, conservation of charge, and the theory of point charges versus line charges, which can be seen below. Statements and assumptions. In this lab, the system is the piece of charge tape and the surroundings are everything else. We will assume that air resistance is negligible and we will treat tape as a line of charges rather than a single charge. We will also assume that the charge is concentrated at the center of the tape and that each tape has the same evenly distributed charge. For initial conditions, the mass of the tape is 0 0.0002 kilograms. The f distance between the two floating pieces of tape is 0 0.021 meters and the estimated net charge of the tape is 2.33 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. In this experiment we will determine if the tape has a positive or negative charge by testing its attraction. We will float one piece of charged tape above the other to see a repulsive force and calculate the charge from the net displacement. We will use the tapes as point charges and create a model in GlowScript. So the first thing that we are going to calculate in this lab is the excess charge. We will use the initial conditions as well as the charge of one electron, which is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, the gravitational force, which in this case is 1.6. 962 times 10 to the negative 3 newtons, as well as the concept of electric force, which is K times Q1 times Q2, all divided by R squared. I will then set the electric force equal to the gravitational force to find that in this case Q equals 9.8 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. So for part two of calculations, we will first determine the amount of excess electrons by dividing excess charge by the charge of one electron, which will yield 6.13 times 10 to the 10 electrons. We will then determine the amount of atoms that have no electrons, which gives the overall positive charge by taking tape area and dividing it by atom area. This will yield 2 times 10 to the 9 atoms on the surface of the piece of tape. We will then find the ratio of excess electrons to atoms. This ended up being 31 electrons per 1 atom. Here is the first page of my GlowScript code. And here is the second page of my GlowScript code. So here is the code output where the blue dots represent tape A, the red dots represent tape B, the yellow arrow represents gravitational force, the white arrow represents electric force, and the green arrows all represent the electric field. So for the discussion section, I would say that my data was very similar to what physics models predicted. Both of the tapes had overall net positive charge, which explained their repulsion and floating behavior. Some possible sources of error come down to measuring, such as incorrectly taking the mass of the tape and measuring the separation distance wrong. All of these values are very small, and it was hard to get an accurate measurement, which could have slightly affected the values of the final forces. For the conclusion of this lab, I will answer the what if and why questions. So what if you had modeled each of your tapes as a single point charge like the previous lab? Compare the estimated value of the charge you get when you use your experimental data to produce a point charge model versus the line charge model. So comparing the values, I found that the line charge calculated was larger than the point charge calculated. The percent difference was approximately 60% and the values are below. And why do these estimates differ? Which value is more likely to be closer to the real value and why? These estimates differ because they 
treat how the charge is distributed through the tape differently. The line charge model is closer to the real value because the model more closely represents the physical object, while the point charge model is a more generalized representation. Having a larger area to calculate will produce a better estimate. And here's the link to my code.